Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al, and it is Tuesday, and I have a DraftKings first look for you. For tonight's NBA slate on DraftKings, there are not one, but two 500K tournaments with $100,000 going to first place at two different buy-in levels. One at 222, and the other one a $15 buy-in with 150 max. So you can get in where you fit in tonight, depending on what your bankroll is, depending on how involved you want to be on tonight's NBA slate. Uh, it's a pretty good looking slate, to be honest. Now, what we don't have, uh, we don't have a lot of super cheap value that's broke just yet. As you guys know, I record these videos at about 8.15 in the morning here on the West Coast. I live in Los Angeles. So sometimes we know who the extreme values are going to be that day because of certain players being out. But right now, the players that we know that have injury news, the players that we know that are out, guys like Paul George, guys like... Uh, Joel Embiid, players like that. Possibly there's some if-then statements with Jimmy Butler and some other players on tonight's slate. So you're going to have to be nimble. You're going to have to be at your workstation. The final 30 to 60 minutes right before lineups lock uh, to know exactly what's going on. But the, the value that's been created on tonight's slate is more in the mid-range, guys, between 4,500 and 6,500. So that's the value that we know right now. And those are the value plays that I'm going to be focusing on for this first look breakdown of the Tuesday night slate. So thank you guys for tuning in once again. Tremendous support recently here on the YouTube channel uh, as I've gotten back to uh, doing these first look videos. They were done every single week for NFL. And now that I took a little bit of a break, I can get back to doing them for NBA. And I've got some big plans for MLB as well. So thank you very much for being here. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ring that notifications bell so that you can get a little bit of a, a notification either on your phone via a pop-up or in your email inbox, or right here on YouTube if you come in every morning anytime I publish a new video. So thank you guys for being here. Let's get right to the slate. As I said, we got two tournaments here. Let's just click on the fadeaway. 500K, 100K to first. And we got the studs. So we got six games. They all fit nicely right here on this one page. I don't have to go scrolling anywhere. Chicago against Indy. We've got Orlando against Philly. There's a few injuries in that game, and we've talked about them already. Uh, OKC against Minnesota with Paul George out. It creates some value plays there. Portland against Memphis. This game is probably going to be not looked at as much as it could be for potential value plays, and I think there's going to be some under-owned players in this game. So as the day goes on, if there's values to be had, I think that we can leverage the field on some good players that have high usage rates in this game here. Houston against Toronto and Boston against Golden State, two very high-profile games on the slate this evening uh, that I'm going to want to watch with my kids before they go to sleep and get ready for school the next day because they love watching basketball and I like watching good basketball, so this is probably where my attention is going to be on the TV tonight. But as far as my attention for DFS, it may or may not come from these games, right? Now, James Harden, fantastic player, amazing scorer, but he has to face off against Toronto, who is a tremendous defensive team already with individual defensive players like Kyle Lowry, Kawhi Leonard, a bunch of other players that are very good defensively. And then they added Mark Gasol, who if you look at the on-off statistics and you sort them by full games only, let's say, you can see that this good defensive team got a whole lot better once they signed Mark Gasol. Now, Gasol's not playing like 35 or 40 minutes a game, but he has transformed them into 25 or whatever minutes he's playing so far for Toronto into a much better defensive team because of how good he is on that end. Allows everybody else to just kind of do their job. Another player that knows how to communicate, another player that knows how to play. And then those on-ball defenders can do their job. So James Harden is somebody who I'm going to want to have some shares of tonight because, look, nobody thought that he was going to go bonkers against Miami either. He was low on that night. Uh, on the 28th against the Heat. We didn't think that he was going to go off for 58 real-life points, but he can do that on a given night. You know, So the, the argument is, well, you don't play Harden if CP3 is active. Well, I disagree with that, first of all. And you don't play Harden against great defensive teams. If you're playing one lineup, you're probably not going to play James Harden uh, against Toronto. If you're playing 20 lineups, you should probably have one or two shares of James Harden. If you're making 150 lineups, you need to make sure that you have at least some allocation of him, whether you're going to match the field or overweight the field uh, in any sort of way. Even though he's not your primary superstar that you're going to be paying for today, he's a player that you have to be mindful of when you're playing tournaments because he is somebody who can break a slate. 
Getting to the players that I think are going to be really highly owned this evening, Russ Westbrook with Paul George out. He didn't have a fantastic game the last game. Only six rebounds and five assists, considering that he's averaging a triple-double. He halved his rebounds and halved his assist totals on the year against Memphis. Don't think that's going to continue against Minnesota. This is a great bounce-back spot at 11.3. Uh, I really want to have some shares of Russ Westbrook tonight. I think that he is an absolute stud as... Uh, it's just completely obvious. It's not like I'm making anything up there. It's not like it's news to you that Russell Westbrook is a great play this evening. Carl Anthony Towns also going to be extremely popular this evening. Comes in less expensive than Russ Westbrook. Uh, and based on some of the projection models that I've looked at today, uh, seems to be the, the guy that their projection model is, is popping on. Now, my issue is that Carl Anthony Towns has been very consistent recently with three 70-point games in his last four. But Russ Westbrook, to me, has a higher floor. Yes, you're paying uh, 1,000 more for him or 700 more for him, whatever. Uh, but he also has a much higher ceiling. So while I like Carl Anthony Towns and I'm going to have some differentiated lineups where I don't have Westbrook and I have Towns and a few lineups if the value presents itself where Towns and Westbrook will both be in the same lineup, I prefer Westbrook over Towns this evening uh, just for the way that I think that lineups can or should be built tonight. Now, we've got some other players. So let's plug Westbrook in there at the top. As I said, Joel Embiid has missed a couple of games. Paul George uh, listed as questionable, but, you know, if he's out again, that's going to create what we've got. As of right now, it looks like, from the information that I've read this morning, it looks like he is not going to play this evening, which opens up some other value plays, which we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, Vucevic had a great season so far. It's been a tough matchup against Philly. It's a less monstrous matchup if Joel Embiid is not patrolling the middle. We spoke about this on a previous show from last week where if Embiid is out, the net defensive rating for every one of these players on Philly just, just goes way down, right? If Joel Embiid is off the floor or if Joel Embiid misses an entire game, Philly is not the same team. He is the linchpin that makes everything go. That doesn't matter in terms of fantasy. Uh, at least, uh, you know, Ben Simmons still going to have a big game tonight as his usage is up. Uh, some other players are, are going to get shots and everything else that we need them to get to be viable fantasy players on Philly. But what it does is these red numbers are going to scare a lot of people off in this uh, opponent's rank right here because Philly is very good defensively on the whole, but they're not as good defensively without Embiid. So Vucevic could come in under own this evening without uh, Joel Embiid in the lineup where people are going to be rating Philly as a good defensive team with Embiid out. They're not as good. My issue with Golden State is that there's too many mouths to feed. You've got Kevin Durant. I can't predict which night is going to be a Kevin Durant night. I can't predict which night is going to be a Steph Curry night. Uh, and it's really hard for me to predict right now, especially with the price that he's at, which night is going to be a DeMarcus Cousins night. And when he was down at 6,000, it was a lot easier, right? We knew he was getting a ton of shots for a 6K player, with the possibility of a double-double. Well, now his price is 8K, and in NBA, you got to be a lot more price-sensitive than you did in MLB, than you did in NFL. It's a, it's a different beast. You have to be price-sensitive. Yes, we may have Klay Thompson out tonight. Yes, we may have Iguodala out tonight. Iggy's not really eating up that many shots. So these guys will get their looks, but it's hard to determine which one of them has a chance at getting a 60 plus point night that could break the slate and win you a GPP. They'll all be good, but they won't, uh, they're not predictably great this evening. Kawhi Leonard uh, sat last game because of rest. He will be back in full force tonight. Uh, 8,900, I think is a fair price for Kawhi Leonard. But the guy with the ceiling that I want to roster along with Russ Westbrook, I want to go with Ben Simmons with and beat out with the possibility of having Jimmy Butler out as well. There's another spot with super high usage for Ben Simmons. They're going to have to lean on him to score. He's going to have to get to the rack and put the ball in as well as uh, account for most of their assists on this team. Ben Simmons, the other place that I want to go and I can plug him in at small forward which gives me a little more roster flexibility. Now, speaking of the guys that I said were out, we also have some spots that we can put here, right? We, we've said that Butler might be out tonight. He is an if-then statement for me. Be sure that you monitor news as the day goes on. But with the injuries that they have, I'm going to roll the dice with J.J. Redick here. Considering that he's only 4,800, we don't have any prevalent values under 4K. 
He does have to score the ball to be effective, but it does look like he is going to have to score the ball this evening. Should get some easy spot ups with uh, Simmons trying to patrol the lane and drive down into the key, which is going to open up Reddick on the outside at 4.8K, where I'm sitting right now until other better value possibly opens up. JJ Reddick, one of my key values so far this morning. Another one, as I said, oops, spelled that wrong. SD8. Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder. The minutes are going to jump. As always, minutes equals money. When Paul George is out, he is going to get higher usage because somebody has to pick up the scoring load. You're talking about somebody who comes off the bench and is a bench scorer for this team. Now going to play a little bit more with the starters. Might still come off the bench, but going to play starters minutes. Uh, and if he is going to be relied on to score and play extra minutes, he is a very good fantasy point per minute producer. Uh, and at 5,500, another player that I want to plug into this lineup, even though they're on the same team, does not matter to me. And somebody who has really taken a leap forward, we're going to go with a four, four guard lineup here, three of them being point guards uh, to start the day. Darren Collison has really produced recently, and you can, you know, they, they touched on it in the player news. Rotowire really hit on that. Uh, his sixth double double of the season coming last game, but half of those have come in the last 14 games. So Collison really being relied on a lot more by this team. They do have a couple of injuries, mostly in the front court, uh, but his minutes have been consistent. His role has been consistent. His fantasy points have been consistent above 30 points for the majority of the last 10 games that he's played, touching at 42 last game. I'm not expecting that sort of an output, but if he plays 30 minutes, at 5,500, I know what I'm going to get, and that's good enough for me to plug him in as a solid floor play, hoping that a ceiling play opens up at the low value that allows me to pay for the guys that I have up top with 4,800 remaining per player. With these five players, Westbrook, Reddick, Simmons, Schroeder, and Collison, I believe that I have the upside that I need. We could have gone with Steven Adams in this lineup. We could have gone with a couple of other players, but I like that the fact that I've got two stud players in this lineup that have triple-double possibilities for me and three other players that are consistent roles playing good minutes uh on teams that need them to score the basketball so thank you guys for tuning in i appreciate you being here one more time if you appreciated this video please drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel ring that notification bell and all my other socials are down below in the description let me know in the comments which other value play you like for this evening if you didn't like one of the ones that i posted here uh and i will catch up to you later bye guys